All right, Night Guy family, I know y'all have been waiting for this one. This is the legend of the navigator who crossed the ice wall and the 178 worlds beyond the Terra. Woman born in the lands behind the ice walls. She found herself in a dreary gray room, struggling to open her eyes. Every day it gets harder to adapt to the walled lands where her ancestors were from. A newspaper dated June 22nd reminded her of the rigid routine here, where humanity seems trapped in a dark, unchanging abyss. There is no freedom. Those from the ancestral lands' hearts ache for the known lands' people, for they are paying for what the now free ancestors had done in the last war. The memories of those who fought for freedom haunt her, their sacrifices seemingly now in vain as they lost the great war. Helen ponders this while turning a small lamp on off, on off, reflecting the bizarre need and obsession for materials in this place. It's all a distraction, a way of life, taught to keep them from their true potential, and they don't even know it, she thought. The history they are taught in their schools is all fabricated, but most of them would defend it with their lives. Can't help but notice that being here feels like the people are being punished for the ancestors' past, a thorn in the side of those from the south, beyond the ice wall and lands that most of the people here have no idea exists, and probably never will. The phrase, pay for a place where you were born, keeps playing in her head. Criminals, she thought. Her father and others paid a high price to find the lands of the giants. Now it's time to break the walls of fear. The custodians have buried and manipulated history, convincing many to defend their lies so blindly. Surviving here is tough, dangerous, toxic, and unforgiving. Their food, water, and the air they breathe are full of toxins to keep them from living as long as they should. All right, y'all, this video and its contents are for entertainment purposes only, and it may or may not be true. Keep in mind, this video is sourced from text that is labeled as fiction. Y'all know the deal. I provide the information and let you decide. And don't forget to like, subscribe, follow, hit that notification bell so you get notified every time I post because there's a lot more of this coming. Navigator across the ice wall. To keep them down and more docile than the past waves of humans. But yet her heart is deeply rooted in these lands. She feels connected to her past and the cause for freedom. Wars and manipulation have divided humanity, making the quest for truth that much more urgent. Helen aims to shed light on the known lands and the other worlds behind the ice wall. Thanks to Shaki, the giant human, we have knowledge that was hidden away from the new humanity. Despite revealing her true origins to only one person, she is paving a path to reality. But it's a very delicate dance. They can accelerate the process and reset humanity with just the push of a button. This circle environment is under much heavier watch than before. Living here feels robotic. Love and empathy are few and far between. The custodians, or parasites, as she likes to call them, have controlled humanity for thousands of years. And to break free, we must understand their weaknesses, but more so, their strengths. The custodians. The parasitic race, as mentioned in chapter one, bases its technology on attack and defense, focusing on discovering, colonizing, and exploiting other lands and beings. Their origins are unclear but theory suggests they merge with locals after being attacked by another race, leading to their advanced development. It was the carrion race, it was like a bird-like species, and that means they crossbred with them. Custodians were the first to leave their world, known for their destructive and colonizing power reaching various worlds. Defeated twice by different races, they remain vengeful and likely to try again. They also attempted to enter the mysterious celestial lands, believed to be the origin of humanity and its life energy or soul, our source. Humanity's destiny is to confront the custodians, an inevitable clash with history repeating itself. Each reset leads to stricter control and less freedom, worsening the living conditions. Escaping during the Great War was temporary. Defeat brought more misery to those left behind. Custodians manipulate humans, resetting them to erase their past, starting anew without parents or grandparents. They control the technological distribution and influential figures reinforce this control. Custodians view humans as inferior and maintain this strict control, even considering resets to prevent one human from escaping. The leaders sometimes debate about eliminating the human race as a whole. Humans perform necessary tasks, creating internal custodian conflicts. Some of them like us. Some humans connected to the custodians gain passage to other lands like the land of Mars. The last reset over 250 years ago followed a significant war, resulting in stricter control. Custodians enjoy human fear and sadness, absorbing negative energy, which explains historical sacrifices and tragedies. 
They have advanced climate modification, creating ice walls around colonized lands to shield and further enclose those races, making escape nearly impossible. Uh, 250 years ago was a reset. That's a crazy thought, y'all. Now the Anunnaki, the notorious Anunnaki, one of the parasitic races spreading sickness across worlds, have manipulated and controlled generations for years. They are one of our enemies, hostile and power hungry, known as the creators of the pyramids. They build these structures on every world they visit. They are considered the strongest within our great dome, surpassing even the custodians. Their technology is highly advanced, particularly their weapons that penetrate the domes, making them feared by other races. They utilize portals for transportation, giving them a significant advantage. Historically, they defeated the custodians during a great conflict. Shortly after, the ancestors started fighting the custodians. And they would have won. The ancestors had the custodians on their heels, on the brink of losing their precious known lands. So the custodians did something they absolutely didn't want to do. They swallowed their pride and went to the Anunnaki for help. In their first meeting, their pleas for help fell on deaf ears. The Anunnaki still had a sour taste in their mouth from the previous 5,000 years of fighting with the custodians. So they went back to fighting with no help, and this time, they were on the very edge of losing the known lands. Knowing this, they compiled some massive stashes of gold. I'm talking mountains of gold that they had stashed across multiple different circle environments. They knew that the Achilles heel of the Anunnaki was that they loved gold. See, the Anunnaki's home terra had lost its great dome or its atmosphere, and it protected them and gave them the climate they needed to survive. The only way to replenish this was to atomize gold and shoot it up into the atmosphere. So strapped with literally tonnage of gold, they went back to the Anunnaki and asked them again, explaining that if they don't, who knows, the Anunnaki could be next. This coupled with the gold and the fact that they love the known lands as well, they decided to help the custodians. This would be the deciding factor in the Great War. With the Anunnaki and Custodians team together, the ancestors stood no chance and had to leave the known lands. Shortly after this, the Custodians opened massive gates at the bottom of the ocean floors and let out the waters below, resulting in the great flood that ravaged the earth. And they stopped us from defeating and becoming free in our lands. In various stories from the known lands, the Anunnaki are often depicted as reptilian beings, but they are in fact very tall up to five meters, with yellowish green skin, which is dry and scaly. They live in arid zones with minimal vegetation. Their eyes are yellow, red, or black with distinctive slit irises. Depicted in many forms with humanoid bodies and various animal heads, they have confused the true history of humanity, conditioning human minds through oppression and conquest. They lack empathy and share a thirst for power and control, similar to the custodians. Tensions between these two races might benefit other worlds under their dominion. Venusians, the original inhabitants of Venus, also known as the Venusians, survived colonization unlike the Martians. Legends suggest early humans sought an alliance with the Venusians to resist the colonizers, but this was disrupted when the custodians colonized the walled lands. Some theories propose that early humans escaped to Venus, where Venusians focused their technology on spiritual development rather than warfare. When custodians invaded Venus, they encountered a relentless storm finding no Venusians on the surface. They had hidden underground in technologically advanced bunkers. The Custodians, unable to overcome the storm and underground defenses, faced heavy casualties, and eventually, they retreated. Despite their advanced technology, Custodians failed to conquer Venus. A significant custodial leader reportedly ended up meeting with a Venusian leader, the Venusian leader pleading for peace and the liberation of humans. But the Custodian leader, it was a staunt no leading to the custodian's departure with significant losses. This story spread throughout the realm, and then people tried to imitate this storm in other circle environments, but it resulted in disastrous outcomes. The Venusians' resilience and advanced underground technology marked a rare victory against the custodians, highlighting their ability to protect their world and their people. Next, we have the Draco, also known as the Edamines, inhabit the Draco lands located northwest of the known lands. These beings, once visitors to our lands, are renowned for their advanced weaponry and significant psychic development. 
Some of them possessed telepathic abilities, which they used to subdue enemies or colonize other lands. Through a treaty, Edamines allied with the Custodians, but initially, the Custodians attacked when the Draco were not at their peak. The Draco lands consist of two large continents with lush vegetation and exotic plants. A great wall of ice left by the Custodians surrounds their territory, but did not prevent the Draco from conquering lands like Osiris and Anubis. Their technology flourished, especially on the Paradise Islands of Anubis, where they established military bases. Land of Mars Behind the ice walls of Mars lies a vast world. Historically significant to humanity, Mars was home to a diverse civilization before being annihilated by colonizers. The Martians, known for their technological and spiritual advancement, chose to die in battle rather than submit to colonization. The Anunnaki, surprised by their total resistance, learned from this first colonization. They had never seen a being stand up like that before. They found it to be noble. Today, Mars is an experimental land where multiple races coexist and engage in constant conflict. The leaders, both Anunnaki and Custodians, oversee the entire region. A human colony exists mostly composed of those who betrayed their race for survival. Notable among them, Admiral Richard Byrd, who confessed some truce before surrendering completely. Mars also hosts the Grey Aliens and Draco Colonies. Rivalries exist among the Greys, human colonists, and other races, monitored closely by the Custodians and Anunnaki. Mars, like other circle environments, experiences time differently, making human passions there a one-way ticket to a long life, approximately 500 years by Earth's comparison. The Custodians moved many races to Mars during their conquests, turning it into a large zoo for studying behaviors, conflicts, and race interactions under close surveillance. The lands of Pegasus, now this is crazy, situated near Jupiter and Hercules, have been significant challenge for several races. The beings born there, known for their wings, focused their technology on exploration rather than weaponry for attack and defense. This proved to be the wrong move when they encountered the Custodians who invaded the Circle environment. The Custodians were astonished to find these beings, known as the Lanteans, effortlessly gliding through the air with their metallic wings, which moved almost like a dance across the firmament of the beautiful world. Conquering these lands required little effort. The Custodians, Lanteans named after their central lands, struck a deal with them. The Custodians ultimately harmed them. They lost much of their mineral wealth and shared their technological advancements, unwittingly aiding in the Custodians in penetrating the celestial lands. The Lanteans realized too late the true intentions of their colonizers, leading to several revolts that ended up in massacres of the winged beings. There are varying accounts of their fate. Some claim the Lanteans ceased to exist, while others suggest they survived and are mistaken for angels from nearby lands. Also close to Jupiter, distinguished by their large white wings, the Lanteans are characterized by their long white hair and significant development in alchemy and science, generally not hostile to other races, they reached the brink of extinction due to their resistance against their oppressors. Some of you may remember on TikTok when this Russian gentleman shared his findings while working construction on the beach. If you take a look at the video, just notice the detail is impeccable, like nothing we've ever seen. So much so that you can see the strings on his cloak dangling, but they are literally petrified. The wings on this being, and its height, it's probably nine feet tall. There was something telling me when I first saw it, there was more to it than it just being a statue. I truly believe that this now petrified being was absolutely once alive. And I believe it is exactly what they're talking about. It's from Pegasus, and it is absolutely Atlantean. Just a theory, of course. Narita, Triton, and Poseidon are the names of the lands that gleam in the dark atmosphere surrounding their circle environment. But because of the harsh storms and arid conditions of their world, large portions of their lands remain uninhabited, with major cities built on the most fertile grounds. Despite this, the Neptunians have created colossal structures, some towering twice the height of those in the known lands. Silence pervades this dark world, where the sun is an opaque presence. Technological advancements have enabled the Neptunians to overcome their environment's challenges. Tall buildings and numerous pyramids, legacies of Anunnaki colonization, dominate their cities. The Anunnaki, known for deceitful technology exchanges, eventually betrayed and colonized the Neptunians, stripping them of their resources overnight. The Neptunians, initially focused on spiritual and personal development, also had significant military capabilities. However, these paled in comparison 
to the Anunnaki's superior technology. Defeated, the Neptunians were forced into servitude, benefiting their colonizers until they eventually rebelled. Fierce battles ensued, with Triton becoming a chaotic epicenter, where much Neptunian blue blood was spilled. The Anunnaki remained their enemies, though a truce was eventually breached, leading to the Anunnaki's withdrawal. Today, the Neptunians enjoy peace and high technological development that benefits their environment and spiritual growth. They maintain peaceful relations with neighboring lands and races, but remain vigilant against potential threats from the Anunnaki or others. Do the Neptunians travel to the other lands? It is said they explore other territories to learn about different races and establish connections, though they haven't visited the known lands or communicated with its leaders. They are familiar with Mars and have contacted the human colony there. The Neptunians are dark blue in color and subsist on local fruits as their system doesn't process a wide variety of foods. They are vegetarians and maintain a somewhat friendly relationship with the custodians, a curiosity given their strong desire for freedom. The Uranians, or the Uranites, have pickish skin and dark eyes. Though some have entirely white eyes that may appear visually impaired. In reality, their vision is hyperdeveloped, allowing them to see great distances and explore other lands. Despite their exceptional eyesight, they have not achieved significant technological or spiritual advancement yet. Uranites endure long winters, extremely low temperatures for most of their local year, which is roughly equivalent to 42 known land years. They are long-lived beings, but their lifespan has decreased due to the strange diseases resulting from laboratory alterations and body manipulations by the custodians. The custodians invaded their world when Uranites were in the early stages of development. Initially uninterested in them or their minerals, the custodians' interest surged upon discovering vast quantities of valuable minerals beneath Uranian lands. Uranium, maybe? This led to massive excavations, leaving the surface scarred by custodial machinery with local forces to work under severe conditions, almost as slaves. Due to this exploitation, Uranites experienced minimal development. The custodians ensured that the Uranites remained undeveloped to prevent any moderate progress. Today, Uranites are mostly concentrated in their core land, Titania. They are generally giant beings, standing 4-5 to five meters tall, with two very long arms. They feed exclusively on vegetables grown in their lands and surrounding areas. The surrounding lands have a climate similar to Neptune's lands, characterized by harsh conditions. Despite their resilience, Uranites remain under custodial dominance, struggling with the manipulated environment and the diseases that have plagued them since the custodian's arrival. In this vast circle environment, Several lands each host unique ways of life. The natives strongly identify with their birth lands and are clearly divided. Having experienced significant internal conflicts in the past, these constant internal wars stem from the Anunnaki's early invasion of their lands. The majority of the population who currently rule reside in the central area known as the Land of Zeus. Historical accounts suggest that a high-ranking Anunnaki leader lived there or still lives there, along with leaders from the Jupiter lands. The Zeus-born and Europeans govern and keep the other populations in perpetual conflict using division to maintain control and manipulate the civilization. Metis is exclusively reserved for the leaders, with no other beings being allowed to enter without permission. The inhabitants have developed advanced destructive weapons for attack and defense but lack spiritual development. Adhering to a hierarchical pyramid system instituted early by the Anunnaki pyramids are omnipresent in these lands symbolizing the clear control of the parasitic race. Contact with humans on the known Earths occurred long ago, specifically the three resets or three reboots ago. These beings exhibit hostility towards most other races and have had several conflicts with the custodians. They have extensively studied humans possessing large laboratories with advanced scientific capabilities for modification and manipulation. These beings are short. I think they're the Zeta Reticuli, if I want to say. In stature 1.4 to 5 meters, known for their distinctive eyes and large bulbous heads, they are carnivorous, primarily feeding on animals born on the surface of their lands. In Aldebaran B, the Taurinos or the Taurines reside reminiscent of the Minotaur from ancient myths with bull heads and human bodies. They embody the mythological image and upon closer examination, reveal a direct connection to humans in past resets. Historically, giant's tales suggested that Taurinos fed on human flesh. However, in recent times, Taurines have proven to be benevolent beings who ended custodial rule long ago. Due to their actions, the Taurines are not well regarded by the dominant races within the Great Dome. They have saved numerous races and species from extinction, particularly those unable to reach their full potential due to parasitic attacks. Despite several attempts to alter their genetic material, their empathy and love for life in other worlds remained unchanged. Initially, this was not the case, leading to significant internal wars within their territory. Carnivorous beings 
Taurines are now scattered across various circle environments. They have always been dedicated to spiritual development and possess extensive knowledge of exploration ships and weaponry. Helen has a direct contact with some of the Taurines, and they have lived with the Anakim Giants for a long time, sharing their technology and wisdom with us and aiding our survival after the Great War. Despite their contributions, Giants, Taurines, Titans, and other beings are often depicted as evil in human stories, feeding on pain, suffering, or flesh, a truth in the distant past. These imposing figures are frequently rejected in the new humanity due to these representations. Taurines can reach up to 4.5-5 meters in height and are distinguished by their large horns, often cut when young. Aldebrand A supports animal and plant life, but Taurines avoid living there due to a violent past marked by extensive bloodshed. A massive internal war between beings from both lands led to complete extinction in Aldebrand A. Out of respect for the memory of those lost, the Taurines decide not to inhabit these lands at all. And last but most certainly not least, my favorite, the Saturnians are incredibly tall beings, 25 feet tall, with some reaching even taller. Their advanced psychic abilities coupled with their imposing physical presence make them exceptionally powerful. Due to their significant technological advancements and inherent strength, they have never been conquered by any parasitic race. The Saturnians, even those living on the rings, remained largely unvisited and overlooked until the Anunnaki finally gave it a try. When the Anunnaki attempted to establish dominance, they quickly realized the futility of their efforts due to the formidable nature of the Saturnians. Emerging from a period of extensive wars, particularly in the known lands, the Anunnaki were in no position for another large-scale conflict. Recognizing the strength and resilience of the Saturnians, they opted for a peaceful relationship. Interestingly enough, when the Anunnaki sought leaders among the Saturnians, they discovered that the traditional hierarchical structure they were accustomed to didn't exist. The Saturnians operated collectively, making decisions through their immense psychic power, ensuring the benefit of their race. Their unity was unbreakable. The Saturnians possessed highly advanced exploration ships and shared considerable knowledge about the Great Dome with the Anunnaki. However, they refused to assist in the penetration of celestial lands, which they, like many other races, consider sacred. Physically, the Saturnians are formidable beings, with a bluish hue covering most of their bodies and white tones on their abdomens. Throughout various resets, they visited the known lands multiple times, weaving countless stories now mixed with mythology due to the custodial manipulation. Some Saturnians have been immortalized on large stones, mountains, or trees, bearing the scars of ancient custodial technology. Alongside the Anakim, the Saturnians are feared by both the Custodians and the Anunnaki, as they pose a significant threat to any plans of conquering the Celestial Lands. So there you have it, y'all. That shit is crazy, right? And it gets better. It's going to start getting back more into Captain Butler and William Morris. I just I want to give a thorough cover of the book. I want to thoroughly cover everything. I want you guys to know about all the different beings. I want you guys to... Be aware of what they are and who they are and what they mean. Ultimately, I'm just following this book because it's so amazing. It's Whether it's fiction, it says it's fiction online, so do what you will with that. Ultimately, I'm always for entertainment purposes only. may or may not be true. I just find the information and let you decide. And this is always a popular subject, the lands beyond the ice wall. It's always fascinating, y'all, and I'm glad to be back doing it. It's going to be a long road to cover everything, which I'm glad. Uh, it'll be intriguing and fun. Uh, I and mean, it gets a lot better than this, y'all. It gets wild quick. So it gets wild quick. So make sure you stay tuned and uh, keep watching me, y'all. I'm working on my eye contact and stuff like that. I'm working on, you know, kind of getting better with my script. So bear with me. This is just a new style for me. I'm not used to it, but it seems to be what YouTubers want. So that's where I'm at. Stay in love, stay in light, be kind to others, y'all. I am out.